Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie Super Mario 64 Edition. In this episode, we're going to be checking out Bowser in the Dark World, and we're going to be doing the first Prince Hilda fight. Now this level here, this took me a while to make. To export the model of Bowser in the Dark World, I had to do it in separate parts. Like, for instance, this part right here that I'm standing on wasn't connected to the other part, so I had to export two separate models and then combine them together after. Another thing about Bowser in the Dark World is a lot of the platforms didn't come up as objects, so I had to, like, use little platforms like this instead. Because, for instance, usually here there's that little, like, spinning platform with four, but that didn't load when I exported the object model, so I had to, like, make do with this instead. This part's actually pretty hard right here. Well, the best strategy is to kind of lure him and use this move. That didn't work. Okay. It's weird, those guys take like three hits to beat. Actually, I'm gonna... Will this work? Okay. I probably should have just done that. One thing that I want your guys' opinion on in the comments is... Do you think it's okay with just these brown platforms here? Because the other option is I could use magic carpets on paths. And move the magic carpets like back and forth. Or do you think it's okay with just like these brown like kind of like platforms that I made? Does it take me a while to go back and to add like magic carpets that are moving around? But it might fit to, it might fit a little bit better than these brown platforms. I'm not sure what to do though. So if you could leave your opinion in the comments if you think these like brown platforms are fine, or if I should change to magic carpets, because I might be able to even like, attach paths to these brown platforms to move them in, like, circles or squares, like in the real Bowser in the Dark World. And, like, even these teeter-totters, it's just not the same with these brown platforms here, and I really can't add teeter-totters in, so this is, like, the best that I could do. Oh! <laughs> 
This is honestly like one of my favorite parts of this hack now, just seeing this Grantilda fight. One thing was, it was way too hard to do, because I barely have any, any honeycombs because of the upgrades. So that's why I put all these honeycombs all over the place around this course, just to make it a little bit easier. I'm thinking of just replacing Bowser with Gruntilda for the three boss fights, so you'll be in the Bowser stage but facing Gruntildas. So that's kind of my plan for the boss battles right now. The only problem that I have is like once you defeat her, the credits roll. I don't really want the credits to roll after this boss fight, because this is the first time you're beating her, not the last, so it's like, I don't really know what to do. So I'll probably go and post in the Banjo's backpack forums and see if they know anything. If any of you guys have any solutions for this, let me know too. Because that, that's why I like posting these videos, to get your guys' feedback and get people's ideas. It took me a while to even import this level because I had to get it like at the perfect height so it would line up with the like with all the objects. And for the next episode of the series, we're gonna be going to the basement, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do um uh, Big Boo's Haunt or is that, is that what it's called? Yeah, Big Boo's. A big Boo's mansion. You know what of course we're talking about. I'm not sure if we're gonna do that level or if we're gonna do Lethal Lava Land. It'll be one of the two. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna do first. I think Lethal Lava Land will probably be uh, the easiest one to do because I think someone already posted an object model online of that course already, so it should be as easy as um, uh, just getting the object model and then putting like in all the notes and the jiggies and stuff instead of having to export the object model myself because that can take a long time. At least I'm already stocked up on a bunch of feathers and uh, eggs. When I was doing this level in practice on an emulator, I always started out with zero, so it made it a lot harder.
Shout out to Simple Flips. I watch a lot of him too. Um, he's pretty cool. He has this new series that he's doing where it's called uh, Green Demon Challenge. Where he just uh, does the Green Demon Challenge on every level with a hack and that's actually really entertaining. I'm looking forward to part 3 of that series from him. That's another good hacking YouTuber would be uh, Skalix. He made like Super Mario 64 Star Road and he made the Super Mario 64 multiplayer hack. But uh, he's working on Star Road 2 right now, but the thing is though, it's not going to be for the 64, it's going to be for the 3DS. It's going to be um, a mod of Super Mario 3D Land, which, I don't know, I just don't feel like there's much of a market for like 3DS hacks right now. I feel like everyone kind of wants 64 hacks. But apparently Skullux, like Star Road Part 2 apparently is, is going to be super good, and I'm sure it will be, I just kind of feel bad that he's putting in all this time and I'm not sure if that many people will actually play it since it's a mod for Super Mario 3D Land. Okay, finally this part. Okay, don't take a hit. Okay, cool. Thought he would lose at least like one health there. Okay, no. No. Okay, there's the Jingles. Alright, finally this last part. Come on, please. Get cool. One thing I really want to see is, I'm not sure if any of you guys know who, like, Cheezo5 is, but he's the guy that currently holds the world record for the 120 star speedrun of Super Mario 64. And he's like a pretty big Twitch streamer and like, he does a little bit of YouTube videos. He actually just made a podcast with Simply, which is pretty good. He shared one of uh, my videos of this hack, saying he can't wait for this to come out or something like that. And I hope I could see him play this game in one of his Twitch streams, that would be really cool. To see like the best player of Mario 64 play this hack, like that'd be like an honor. Can I? Nope. What? 
Okay. Guess I can do this and then. This part's so much easier with an actual 64 controller. Because when I was practicing, I was practicing with an Xbox controller on like an emulator. But now that I'm using my EverDrive in an actual 64, it's like makes it so much easier to control these eggs and like. Good. Where it's kind of cool how she uh, falls in the castle courtyard here. But yeah, thanks for watching this episode of uh, Let's Play Banjo Kazooie Mario 64 Edition. Um, if you could leave a like and a subscribe, that'd be greatly appreciated. And yeah. Stay tuned for the next episode. It should be out tomorrow.